Hi, uh, my name is Derek. Um, this is just a short video, hopefully, for those of you who are interested in setting up your own uh, virtual GOS box on your own personal computer. So, um, um, I just want to go through, um, just give a few um, uh, suggestions, uh, some help here about uh, downloading and, and getting the thing uh, installed. Okay, so I'll, I'll go through all these steps. Uh, kind of show you how they're done here, so what you need to download and what you need to do basically to, to get thing, the thing installed. Um, and then I'll also, uh, once we get the GOS box running, I'll show you a couple of the features of it, okay? So um, let's, let's start. I've got a Windows desktop here, so I'll, I'll do this example in Windows. Uh, the software should work in Windows or Mac or Linux, so I've tested on, on all those. Um, and it seems to work fine. Um, so the first thing you want to do is, is go ahead and go to this URL, bitbucket.org slash dharder slash TLC dash Gaussian box. Okay. So the, the, there's, there's some more extensive um, help information on here in the readme on the, the first page on here. Um, about the steps you need to do, plus links so that you can go to the pages where you need to go to to download the stuff, okay? So um, if you're at TAMUC and you've got one of our IT department's um, uh, lockdown laptops or, or desktops, you will have to get them to um, download and install the software for you. Um, and you could probably maybe even get them to do the whole thing, okay? So, but um, but I'll, I'll show you the steps here. You might want to, I mean, you'll definitely need to get them to install, you know, do the first three steps of, of downloading and installing the software. And then after that, you can do the things on your own or you can get some help from them or from me. I'll, I'll be happy to, to help you get it set up as well once you have these software installed. So um, I've already downloaded these. You need three things installed. You need to get uh, Git, G-I-T, okay? So you should get it from this official site here, the Git SCM site. Uh, all three of these are standard Windows um, install packages. If, if you're doing this on Windows, uh, the same for Mac. So if you're doing it on Mac, you can get standard uh, install installers for Macintosh, Mac OS. Um, so yeah, you'll just want to get the 64-bit the um, uh, get set up for Windows, you'll end up with a file named um, git, and, and as, as of this video, I'm, I'm at 2.27, so you should probably have that version or higher. So, so download that, um, and um, you go ahead and start the installer. So there was one thing that I want to make a note of here, so you want to go ahead and, and allow it to make changes to your system here. So um, I've already got these installed, so I, I'll probably I won't do the final step to have them install here when I show it to you. Um, but um, um, for, for most of these, you can accept the defaults that it suggests. There is one thing on Git, though. Um, I think the default is maybe Vim on here, but uh, again, you won't. You, you can accept what, whatever editor it, it has as the default here. Um, uh, go ahead and... and allow it to adjust your path to use it from the command line uh, uh, check that so here's the one that, that you should try and uh, try and change we found out we've had some problems uh, with this so you want it to check out and check in as is without making um, uh, changes to the carriage return line feeds on the files that it checks out so, so the basic problem that we were having is if you're on a Windows system and it checks out these shell scripts we use for installation uh, it changes the line feed endings but then it, we try to use those inside of a Linux box uh, as a shell script um, and you get some some mysterious uh, errors or some, some things fail mysteriously so, so it is better to check that out although I think I've also fixed it so that even if it does change the line um, carriage return line feeds, it would still work, but, uh, but it is better to check these out as is, okay? So that, that's the only one that, that you have to, um, to, to change there, okay? And then, like I said, you know, you should go ahead and hit, hit install. I've already got it, got it installed on the system, but uh, you should hit install and let it install in there. Um, right? And like I said in my notes here, it's always good to check your installation. So um, um, for Git, it, it should put the, the tools that you need on the command line. Uh, oh, and, and um, one quick thing I wanted to mention. So if you've never used a DOS command prompt, if you just bring up your start menu um, and you type command, C-O-M-M-A-N-D, 
it should it should show up on there for you. I normally like to pin this to my uh, taskbar, so I normally right click on there um, and and pin it to my taskbar, so I have a uh, DOS command line terminal or a DOS command prompt that I can use there. Okay, so when you first run a prompt, it puts you into your uh, what's known as your home directory, which on a Windows system will, be, will usually be something like C column users and then whatever your username is on the system. So I'm Dash on this Windows system. So again, if you're like a TMUC computer, it's probably going to be your, your official username, like Hard or Derek or something like that will be your, your username there. Okay. So if Git is installed correctly, um, you should be able to do use the where command um, and it will find it. Um, so by default, git is installed in program files, git, cmd, uh, and later on I'll show you running this git command. So you should be able to run git, git commands though. For example, you can ask git for what version it is. And, and like I said, uh, in this video I'm installing version 2.27, so you should see that or probably, or, or that or at least that or maybe something higher for a version number. So that's everything for Git. Um, the next thing you need is the VirtualBox um, virtualization tools. So again, um, if, if you go to this link, it, it's a standard Windows installer. Um, so you should be able to select the, the Windows host. So as of this video, we're using 6.1.12. So try and use at least that or a newer, newer version of the VirtualBox. And if you click on that, it'll download the installer. Um, I might not go all the way through this. I can't remember. This one might be a little bit longer to go through all the steps here. Uh, but for this one, you should be able to s select all of the, um, the, the def you know, just leave the, um, um, the, the things that you want. So um, I've already got it installed, so I don't think it'll ask you that. If you don't have it installed, it'll go past that. Uh, okay, yeah, so I probably should have uninstalled this before I started doing this. So uh, you won't get these questions about repairing if you, if you don't have it installed. Um, so, but, but you can just select all the defaults and then let the, the, the virtual box installer run, okay? Um, and as I mentioned here, um, so virtual box isn't meant to be run from the command line. Uh, it is, uh, it's got a, a, a GUI uh, um, front end to it. So once you've installed it, you, you should, if you search for VirtualBox, you should find Oracle VM VirtualBox. So you can check that it's installed by bringing that up if you want to. Um, or like I said here, um, you can try it from the command line, although it's not, th this tool isn't really meant to be run from the command line. Um, but um, you could do something like um, try and run so it's, it's not put into your path by default. So if you do see colon Oracle um, virtual box uh, bin, um, it should run it, although I guess I don't have my path. I may, may have to update my README there, so let me check. So, so it should uh, install it on, um, so, so I saw most of that path. Uh, program files, so if we go to our C drive um, and look at program files, so again, this, if you select the default, this is where it'll put it. Um, Oracle, um, VirtualBox, um, oh, it's just right there. I guess there's no bin directory. I, I think something slightly changed between version one point. 10 and 1.12 or something like that. So I do need to update my, my README. So it should be just uh, that. So hopefully by the time you actually see this, I'll have updated the README. So anyway, I mean, you can run certain VirtualBox commands from the command line um, using this VBox manage, which you probably shouldn't have to do to, to use this Gaussian box here. But, um, but if you ask for the version, you should get version 6.1.12, OK? Um, and then finally, you need these Vagrant virtualization tools here. Um, so again, if you run this installer, you can just select the default. So if, if you go to this page um, and download this, um, the result will be uh, a file called Vagrant 2.2. So as of this video, my version is 2.2.9 here. Okay. So. Um, 
Um, and again, you can just go through this and select all the defaults. Um, so right now it's checking to make certain I got enough disk space. Um, and um, and yeah, so I, I, won't, I won't step through these. So, so select all the defaults and let Vagrant install for you, okay? Um, so again, once Vagrant is installed, um, Oh, I do suggest here that you reboot your computer at this point. Um, although, let me let me go and, sh and check the Vagrant, and I'll come back and talk about why you might want to reboot. So, so, so Vagrant is meant to be run from the command line. So, on Windows, if you do where, you should find it on your path now after you run the installer. So, it installs it in HashiCorp Vagrant uh, bin here. And if you check the version, um, you should find that it's 2.2.9 or, or possibly newer, um, depending on what you install. Okay? So I suggest here, after you install these three tools, that you reboot your system because some things, especially for Vagrant, need to be set up, uh, maybe for VirtualBox as well. While you're rebooting, you might want to get into your BIOS and, and just double check that you have virtualization enabled on your CPU. I think... A lot of times it's enabled by default, but, but it's a good idea to go ahead and check. So normally it's the F2 key, although you can check this link, uh, sometimes it's, it's a different key. So basically when it's booting up, there'll, there'll normally be a message about which key to, to hit to get into your BIOS if you've never done that before. But you want to go in there and look in your CPU settings um, and try and, make, and, and find the one about virtualization. So if, if you're a, if you're an Intel CPU, it's probably something called like VT-X, or if you're an AMD CPU in your system, it's probably like AMD-V. So make certain that, that those are enabled. Um, all right. Also for Windows, um, you want to make certain that this Hyper-V is disabled. Okay, so you can go to this link um, um, and uh, follow these instructions here. Um, so I've had some problems sometimes. Uh, with, with with this Hyper V uh, when it's when it's enabled. So, like they say here, um, to to disable the thing, you need to in the in the control panel. So, to get the control panel again, I usually just bring up the start menu and type in control. So, I get my control panel. Um, And uh, you have to go to the program features. Although uh, here to to go to program features. Um, um, so, so these instructions are a little bit off. You want to go to programs, I believe, and then then there's where you'll find the program features, right? Um, and then in here on the left hand side, um, turn Windows features on or off. So once you find the program features, there'll be this turn Windows features on and off over here, and this is where you get that uh, Windows features um, um, box down here, and you just have to find. And like it says here, you only need to, you should only disable the Hyper V hypervisor um, when you do this here. So, um, so when this comes up, you just have to come down here and find Hyper V, um, and then it's the Hyper V platform, um, and then I've already, again I've got it disabled. So you want to make certain that that checkbox is uh, unchecked. Um, like I have it right there. All right, you can leave this one on and the others on. Just just have that one on. All right. So do those things. Reboot and then check that Vagrant um, is running. So at this point, then you're ready to go. Okay. So and that's the only thing that you really need uh, if you're at TMUC uh, because you'll need you know um, administrative p privileges to install those packages. Right. So after that, you can do these steps yourself or you can ask um, for some help. Uh, from from the um, IT person, so they should be able to do these things as well. So here's what I normally do. Um, I like to have my my virtual boxes like these in a separate directory called boxes. So again, if you open up um, a DOS prompt, I, I, I start by making a directory boxes. So so you can make it from the command line like that, um, or you can you know from your home. Uh, from your file browser, um, you know, you can do like a, what's it, file, um, um, uh, new folder, uh, or do you create a new folder? I can't remember now. Um, uh, 
Um, anyway, so however you normally create a new folder, I, I know you can also right click down in here and do like a new folder. So you, so you could also create, you know, a folder. I've already caught, got a, a folder create called boxes because I just did it from my command line. So there it is. So, um, other boxes, right? So um, once you've created your boxes directory, um, I've got boxes. I've also got other boxes, right? But you should change directory into boxes, right? Now uh, we're going to use the git to um, clone this repository, okay? So git is a tool that's actually normally for building uh, and developing software, um, but I'm using it to kind of distribute software here and, and set up these virtual boxes. Um, so you can just copy and paste this if you want to. So, so control C, uh, I think it's just control V for command prompt window here. So what this will do, uh, this is really just kind of downloading all these files from the repository, from this repository, in fact, the, the Bitbucket org TLC Gaussian box, right? So this will download all these files, and, and it'll download these files um, into the boxes subdirectory. Okay, so that, that, that boxes directory that we just created, um, if you look in there, uh, it's not completely done downloading, but it creates uh, another subdirectory called TLC Gaussian boxes, into which is downloading um, all these files right now, okay? Um, so if you have a faster connection, this isn't really that big, although I'm, I'm on a relatively sl slow connection here from where I'm doing this video. So uh, I don't know, I might have to pause here for a bit. Um, let's see if we can see anything yet. No, yeah, so it's still... Still hasn't downloaded the stuff. So. Um, okay, I'm going to pause the video um, and then we'll come back once that's um, downloaded. Then, so. Okay, um, so we're done now with the Git clone. Um, so, like I said, um, here from from here, you should be able to. Um, see, you know, that there's a subdirectory now called TLC Gaussian Box, and you should be able to change directory into it, which you'll want to do from your command line. So now if you look in there, um, you'll see that there's um, several folders plus some other files. Uh, there's a vagrant file, which is kind of the important one here. Um, but our next step is we need to, before you uh, actually try and bring your virtual box up to provision it and install it, you need to put some stuff into your packages. Okay, so, so that was it for the git for step four of the git clone. Um, so, so you just need to run that command and then change directory into your subdirectory. Then for this, um, I don't have these packages in the repository because, well, the you know for one they're they're pretty big, so I, I didn't want to have them in there. But for the other thing is that um, um, you know th these are uh, licensed. Uh, um, software that we pay for, Gaussian is in particular, plus actually GAMS is as well, although it's an academic license, but they ask us not to share that with other people, only with people that, that are in our research group, basically. So um, so I'll, I'll have to give you these. I'll, I'll give you a link that you can download it from or just give them to you on a thumb drive or something like that, okay? So once you have these, though, you want to place these into that packages subdirectory. So... Um, Let me open up a new window here. So, so I've already got them downloaded on my system here into my downloads. Um, so there's the the E64 is actually the Gaussian installer, and the G5 is the Gauss 5 installer. And then GAMS, of course, is GAMS. Um, if you don't want to have those, uh, you don't have to put the install packages on there, and they just won't be installed inside of your Gauss box. Um, plus, the other things is I'll give you. I should also give you what are known as secure shell keys. Okay, there's a .pem and a .pub. So this is your public and your private uh, key. Okay, so part of the installation of your Gauss box is it will set it up for you to have um, access to the Gaussian comp compute cluster. Okay, so you can submit jobs and things um, to, to the big compute cluster from inside of your personal Gaussian box. Okay. So you want to take these um, and put these into the, the packages directory, okay? 
pass it out of this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So these five. There might be others. Um, I'll just go ahead and move them there, you know. So depending on after you watch this video, I might continue adding more software into these DOS boxes. So there might be other packages you could put in there to get installed, okay. And then as a final thing, as I mentioned in the README, also make certain that you edit this um, this file. So Gaussian cluster user.txt. So right click on it and, and do an edit. Um, it, it has a username of CentOS, but but if on the on the Gaussian compute cluster, you know, like like if your username is dharder um, or whatever it is, the username that I told you that I gave you, edit this. I'm going to leave it as CentOS for my example here, but but edit that to your actual username, okay? Because it's the combination of this username with your public and private secure shell keys. Uh, that's how we set up the access to the cluster uh, within, you know, inside of the um, compute, the your local Goss box. Okay, all right. So, so just change your username and then save. Make certain that you save that. All right. You might want to double check after closing if you open it back up that you do see your your username that you edited uh, in there. All right. Um, So, and then that's it. So we're ready now to go ahead and try uh, what's known as provisioning the, the Goss box, okay? So this is, uh, provisioning is really just installing a bunch of software. So we, we installed Gaussian and, and uh, uh, Goss View and GAMS and some other things, other tools and stuff that we need, uh, MacMul plot and things like that. So all you need to do, again, is change into the TLC Gaussian box subdirectory and try and do the vagrant up, okay? So I'll go ahead and start it here. So this will take a while. So once you get to this point, go ahead and vagrant up um, and, and make certain that it starts going um, and starts downloading stuff. Um, um, I'm probably not going to be able to show you. It should come up re relatively quickly for you that it starts doing some things. Um, I'm actually running inside of a virtual machine already, so virtual machines inside of virtual machines, um, uh, tend to have some issues, okay. So, but I, I'll show you kind of the results of this. So, so I'm going to pause the video at this point. So, but what you should see after doing Vagrant Up uh, is a bunch of messages will start coming down, and, and you'll see it installing things and, and doing other stuff, um, okay. Um, and um, so, yeah, let me let me pause the video, and then when I come back, I'll show you what you should see if everything went you know, uh, correctly, and, and, and everything got installed correctly, so. Okay, hi, um, welcome back. I, I tried to bring that up just when I was done here. I, um, I don't know if I quite captured that in the video. So um, when you're running this, um, you should see, you know, it, it'll pretty quickly, it'll pop up basically a terminal, okay? And then you'll start getting a bunch of stuff installed. And like I said, you know, uh, this, this will take a while. It has to actually download a base box image and then it has to download a bunch of software and then it has to install the things, including your Goss and stuff, so. Um, at the end, um, I've got it. It should shut down um, automatically. If it doesn't, if it leaves that GUI window up, you should do a vagrant um, halt to go ahead and stop it. Okay, uh, but but um, uh, in this case, it, it did shut down like like it's supposed to. The other thing, I mean, you know, you, you want to kind of see at the end here. If you get this message that the Gaussian compute box successfully installed. Um, you probably got most everything uh, correctly put in there that, that we wanted to get in, okay? So um, the next step is to go ahead and try it out, okay? So um, I'm going to try and bring it up here. Um, so, so you want to do a, basically a vagrant up again in order to bring it up, um, okay? And then we're going to um, look at these, uh, I'm just going to go real quickly through some of the features of your running Goss box. So being able to use Secure Shell and Secure FTP to, to get to the cluster file system and your local files, um, and how you can run Goss in jobs and Goss view and some other things in there, okay? So let's try it out. So when you do a vagrant up, um, so normally it should, uh, i got to spell it correctly, Vagrant, V-A-G-R-A-N-T, up oh, there we go. Oh, so, so you want to do all these Vagrant commands, in again, inside of the subdirectory, the TLC Gaussian box subdirectory here. So um, I've got some bat files and shell scripts so that you can set up, so you can 
put an icon on your desktop to click on to, to start these up once you get everything configured and running here. So, so if everything, uh, I, I wanted to, to point out, you should check, uh, one, one thing you should check is that um, um, you do get this forwarding of ports from port 22 to the port 2222. Um, so that just means that Secure Shell is working between your host machine, you know, your laptop or desktop, um, and the, uh, the the virtual Gaussian box that we created. The other thing, probably more important, um, uh, down here, it's going to try and um, share this TLC Gaussian box directory with your um, virtual Gauss box. Okay. So you should see um, here, so, so you might get a warning about the guest additions don't match. Usually that's fine. Uh, it, 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 and it's definitely fine as long as you see this message here that, that slash vagrant has been shared or mapped to your home directory. So again, your, your home directory will differ. So my home directory on, on what I'm using now is home dash. If you're on Windows, it'll be like probably C colon users. Um, you know, your username and then boxes if you created the boxes directory, like I said, and, and then the TLC Gaussian box, okay? So that, that means that, that your directory, the, this TLC directory, this one here that, that we're currently in, is being shared with your Gauss box, okay? So it should run up, it should bring up um, basically a, a desktop in your virtual box that you can use. Um, this should be resizable. So, so you can resize what you want. Although sometimes for these virtual boxes, I find that, that resizing can be a problem depending on the video drivers that get set up and stuff. So if, if you are having problems resizing one of these virtual boxes, try instead to use the view um, and, and use your virtual screen and resize it to one of its standard sizes that it likes, okay? So I'm gonna try um, 1920 by 1080 here. Oh, that's too big, so you won't be able to see the bottom of my screen, I don't think. Um, let me use a slightly different, slightly smaller size. So let's try that one there. So I think you should be able to see all of that on my video here, okay? So there's my virtual box uh, running here. So I should have some stuff uh, installed on here for you, put onto your desktop. Um, so I like to get these arranged here so I can see stuff. So let's get these over here. Um, so this Gauss View desktop and the MacMult plot are actually the, the Gauss view executable that you can run and the MacMold plot that executable that you can run. And then besides that, I got a bunch of documentation like uh, for Gauss view, um, our TLC compute cluster commands, uh, Gaussian user manual, uh, a user manual for MacMold plot, and a user manual for GAMS, okay? So let me start by showing you the the, the the file system connections that should be set up. You should see. You should get this Gauss cluster here. You could double click on that, or you can double click on your files folder. Um, I usually like to use a, a list view rather than um, an icon view here. But you should see that that there are two subfolders um, in your Gauss box. One called Gauss cluster and one called Gauss local. So let me first do the Gauss local. That was the one I was talking about. So this is really um, a link to uh, your TLC Gaussian box subdirectory on your host machine, okay? So if you look in here, you'll see all those same files, the, the packages and things. But uh, mainly this is, uh, for example, I, I can copy files back and forth between my host um, and your virtual box by putting files in here, right? So. Um, So if I create a file called like test.temp now in here on my host machine, so if I go back and look in this directory, I'll probably have to reload it, but um, uh, so you should see the, the test.temp te again, but this is inside of my, um, um, of my virtual box, right? Okay. So anyway, that, that's how you can get files between your host machine and your virtual um, Gauss box virtual machine, okay? Um, I, I often like to put these directories um, onto my um, uh, put a bookmark for these. So there's there's Gauss local, um, 
and then Gauss cluster should be this. This is going to make a sh secure shell connection, a secure FTP connection, actually, uh, between your host machine and your uh, cluster account. Okay, so these are the actual files that are on the Gaussian compute cluster, your big machine. Okay, up there, right? Uh, or these are my files, basically. You'll see your files that are in your home directory when you bring this up. All right. Um, and you can also, um, we've got secure shell set up so that you can easily, and we've got it set up using your, your secure shell key instead of having to type in a username and password. So for that, you'll still need um, a terminal connection. So, so you'll need to go under activities and search for a terminal. Um, again, I like to right click on this and, and add this to my favorites. So I have a, a terminal here. I don't know why it adds on two of these. So, um, but, but I'll put my terminal up here, move it up to the top. Okay, so when you have a terminal, of course, this is running on my local Goss box, and I'll show later on how you can run um, Gaussian jobs uh, from here. But you can secure shell over to um, to the cluster by using secure shell Goss. Okay, uh, you don't need a username and password. It should be set up to be using uh, your public private key authentication to do this. Okay. So uh, you'll get a warning message, but otherwise, uh, I'm now actually on my account on the Goss cluster. Um, so all those commands you might have been using on your Goss cluster, um, like I've described uh, in here, you know, we should be able to use. So, um, so for example, I should be able to create a job and submit it on the cluster now, as long as it's on my my cluster here so like uh, let's say test uh, 45 All right so i just submitted that job to the uh to the cluster and it's now running um on the the cluster queue here all right and i can use qstat and qmon to monitor it okay um but but notice so if i do a directory listing here so these are my directory files on my gauss cluster Right, uh, and and again, um, if if you go to that Goss cluster uh, connection, let me add that as a bookmark as well. Right, so so these are the the same files, right? And you know, if if I have a file on my local machine, I can copy it into this Goss cluster to get it up to here, so that you can run it, you know, on, on the compute cluster. All right. Um, so that's just a little bit about using the, the FTP and the secure shell. So, so you, have, you should have complete access to uh, your, your cluster um, um, account so you can submit jobs and do things like that, OK? Um, so then let's show kind of the main thing that I know that a lot of people that are using Goss Gaussian 09 and Goss View, they want to be able to run Goss View, okay? So you really shouldn't run it, you know, um, on the Guacamole desktop. Uh, that's going to be slow. So if, if you set up this local Goss box like this, you can run it locally on your machine. Um, so if you double click on this Goss View desktop, um, the first time you do this, it'll give you kind of a, a message, a warning message, but if you just trust it uh, after that, um, it should be runnable, okay? Um, so now you've got Gross View, okay? Close that. All right. So, and, and notice, because you've got that secure shell connection, um, if I want to, um, I could open up a file um, on my local machine, but I could also go to that Gauss cluster um, and open up, for example, that Test45 uh, job, molecule uh, job. That, that's, but this, this is a file is actually on my remote cluster, but I can open it up here in my local Gauss View, um, and do thing, you know, modify that com file, however you guys normally do the com file, uh, look at stuff and save it. And then any changes I make here will actually get saved um, up to my cluster um, account, okay? But, but you can also do these locally, right? Um, so if I had a job, uh, let me open up another terminal. So again, it, it can be easy to confuse yourself um, um, to, to, to get lost, you know. So, so this one is currently logged into my remote Goss cluster compute machine account. Um, I can open up another terminal by right clicking um, or by doing um, a file new tab, for example, if I want tab. So I'm back on this one, I'm, I'm back onto my local Goss box here inside of here. 
So at the moment, I don't have any uh, .com files. I'm going to copy one of the test files. Um, let me just copy uh, 72 here, all right? So now I've got this, this test072, which is a Gaussian 09 uh, com file. Uh, in my home directory. Right? So if I go back to my home on the file browser, you know, you'll see that it's now uh, there. Right? Um, and again, I can, I can open up this local com file again from my Goss view. Right? Um, oh, again, so I'm on my Goss cluster here. So, so you have to be aware of where you're at. So if I want to open up the 72, it's, it's, I go back to my home directory and there it is, my home directory. So. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not familiar with, I, I guess I picked a bad test here. Let me, let me, know, let me get one that I know that works. I know um, the 45 works, so. There we go. All right, so you can look at it and do whatever you normally do with Gloss View. Um, and then if you save it, it'll save here. Uh, on that, and that particular one will save here on my local machine. Okay. Um, by the way, so you know you can double click on here um, to open up Goss View. Uh, I, I get I like to put these onto my start menu. So like I showed before, if you click on Activities and search for Goss, it should come up, and then I can right click and add that to my favorite. So that'll add to my what what. Ubuntu calls your favorites or your taskbar. You have it over here as well uh, to start up from. So. All right. Um, so that's Glass View. Um, and then on your local machine, um, so like I, I, like I, I had in this little handout, um, you, you, you want one to, on your local machine, you don't have like a cluster of, of compute nodes like you do on the, uh, the, the, the cluster machine. So you, so you don't have the G09Q sub, but you can just run a single job serially um, on your machine, okay? So, so there should be G09 serial, right? Um, and I can use that to run. So if I, I run this here from my Goss box, uh, it'll be running on my laptop or your laptop or your desktop. It'll be running locally, okay? So, so it'll, it'll run a single job fine um, on here. So, so the normal thing to do for this G09 serial is to take the com file, uh, do its computations, and the result should be a .log file, um, test045.log with your results. Uh, this takes about a minute or two to run here, so once it's done, all right? Um, so those are your main commands that you'll want to, to use um, if you're doing Gaussian, so the G09 serial, and, and, and be able to start the Goss view to, to, to do Goss jobs. Uh, we do have GAMS installed, um, so let me show that real quickly. Um, I'll open up a new terminal here, a new tab. Well, that's, I'll, let, I'll let that keep running, and, and I'll um, start a GAMS job here. So now I've got, I've got one tab opened up to my remote cluster account, and I've got one tab locally running um, the uh, a Gaussian 9 job. Uh, we've got GAMS installed by default if you want to play around with it. Um, so I could copy one of the... It's not common. What is it? Um... Um, standard so for my um, looking at GAMS it's, it's set up pretty similarly to, to Gaussian um, so it has a .inp file instead of a .com file for inputs so, so if you have one of these files um, in your local directory Um, you can look at it. Um, the, the the format is probably not compatible with Gaussian, I suppose, but but it looks kind of similar, um, uh, a similar idea on on how you specify um, a, a compute job to run with GAMS, right? So and then you want to use the run GMS 
um, command uh, in order to execute it. And the result of this is a, um, um, it actually sends this to standard output. So if you run it, you'll get the, the, the result out here um, on standard output here. So if you want to save this output, you have to redirect it into a, um, um, into an output file. Okay. So, um, I'll let that run. So, but, 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 you know, I, you can run GAMS jobs as well. And, and it looks pretty similar to how Gaussian works. And the, the MacMul plot seems to be the kind of the, um, equivalent to Gauss view, or at least has some of the same functionality for GAMS. Um, so you can start it up here, um, by double clicking on it and trusting it the first time. Um, or, um, again, you can also, um, search for it. You have to search for WX MacMul plot or else it won't find it. So, so if you find it there, you can add it to your favorites if you want to. Um, and then if you open up one of those dot .input files, um, like this example one dot input, uh, you'll get your, uh, and, and I think you can do the same kinds of, some of the same kinds of things you can do from Gauss view to, to set things and save them back to the input file so you can run um, a different job, that kind of thing. So, um, all right. So I think that that's basically it. Let's see if we covered everything. So, so we looked over accessing your files on uh, your, your shared local machine and also on the compute cluster using SSH and SFTP uh, and also secure shelling over to the cluster so you can submit jobs and things. Um, and we ran a Gaussian job um, and we ran Gauss view and I also sh showed kind of using GAMS as well. All right. Um, so that's it. Um, yeah, if, if you have any problems getting those set up, let me know. Um, I can certainly help you um, uh, get them up and running. Uh, at this point, we've got most of the kinks worked out. I think so. so. So things have been running pretty smoothly in terms of setting this up, at least on a Windows machine. We've tested it a couple of times, and, and they seem to be working well now. So, uh, okay, and I will see you later then.